Okay, so when we went over magnetic field lines and how their magnetic fields are created, it was because of moving charges. So if I have charges moving like uniformly in one uh, direction, it's definitely going to uh, create a magnetic field, okay? So this is funny, this Hans Christian Ersted guy, he was actually trying to prove that a current carrying wire didn't have a magnetic field, and then he proved that it did. <laughs> So we basically put a current through a wire and put a, a compass underneath it uh, and the compass needle moved, okay? So that's what's going on. So what we're going to do today is figure out how the direction of the magnetic field happens. So when we have a current carrying wire, the magnetic field is going circular around it, okay? So I need to figure out why is this case going this way? Why is it going to go another way? So that's what we need to uh, figure out today and which way is the magnetic field going to go when we have the current carrying wire. So for example, we know that if we have a current going out of the page, by the way, I have two new things to show you because how do we know something's coming out of the page? We draw a dot, okay? That there means out of the page, okay? So if I have a current coming out of the page, and that just means you see that kind of filled in dot there, then my magnetic field is going to be going counterclockwise around here. Okay, there's a trick to knowing this. Don't worry, I'm going to show you in a minute. But for example, that's just one thing that we know. So if I have a current going out of the page towards you right now, the uh, magnetic field is going to be going counterclockwise like that, okay? If I have current going into the page, we communicate that by putting an X, okay? So X means out or into the page, okay? And then the magnetic field is going to be going the opposite direction. It's going to be going clockwise. Okay, so remember, please, dot means out of the page. X means into the page. The way I remember that is uh, picturing an arrow, okay? So if an arrow is coming at you with the arrowhead, you're just going to see the tip of the arrowhead, right? If an uh, arrow is going away from you, you see the cross section of the feathers of the arrow, so it's going away from you, okay? And that's basically it. Because here now we have, uh, we're working with all three dimensions, so we need to be able to communicate, okay, left, right, north, south, and now into the page and out of the page are up and down, right? That's our third dimension. So how do I know this? How do I figure out if it's going out of the page, it's going counterclockwise into the page, it's going clockwise? How do I know this? We figure this out using the first hand rule, okay? So let's go over what the heck that means. So if it says electron flow is in a certain way, you're gonna use your left hand, okay? If it says conventional current or just current, you're gonna use your right hand. Okay, so what do you do? Your thumb here is going to be the direction of the current and your fingers, the way they curl around, okay? I don't know many people can, that can curl their fingers the other way, so the way that they naturally curl is the way that the magnetic field is gonna happen, okay? So if I look at this last example, here I know current, it didn't say electron flow, so I'm gonna use my right hand for current. It said it's out of the page. So if current's out of the page, I'm gonna direct my thumb out of the page. Okay, so my thumb is coming right at you right now. Can you see that? So then how do I know which way the magnetic field is going? Well, which way do my fingers curve? Look at that, they're curving counterclockwise. So it's always going in the direction of your fingers, okay? Here it says current is into the page. So current, again, right hand, not the left. It's a, if it says electron flow, we're using our left hand, okay? So current is into the page. So I'm gonna have my thumb go into the page. And I know you can't see that very well, but there we go. My uh, current is go going into the page. So my thumb is directed into the page. So what's happening with my fingers? Look at that. They're going around clockwise, okay? 
So that's your first hand rule on how you use your hand to figure out which way the magnetic field around a current carrying wire is. So again, we only, only ever use this with a current carrying wire. Obviously this wire isn't connected to anything right now. It's not, has no current going through it, but say it did. If the current was going to my right, which way would the magnetic field be going? It'd be curling around like that. Okay, so be going into the page here, going behind it, and then out of the page there, and then in front of it like that. Okay, towards me. So into the page, away from me, out of the page, towards me. And that's what the magnetic field is doing. It's going around and around and around like that. Okay? Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. So for example, we have a compass placed below a current carrying conductor. So we want to know which way is the needle going to point if conventional current, conventional current means right hand. Okay, so the conventional current is flowing into the page. So into the page is a big X, right? Okay, so we know that conventional current, right hand is flowing into the page. So therefore, our magnetic field is curving around clockwise, okay? So our magnetic field is going around like this. Okay? So I wanna know if I place this compass down here, it's a little far away, it should actually be closer, but that's okay. Uh, if I place a compass below it, which way is the needle gonna point, right? The needle's gonna go with the magnetic field and how it's pointing. Well, again, right below here, I can see that it's going to the left or it's going west because it's going clockwise. So just imagine a bunch of arrows going this way, okay? But again, I only care about which way is the arrow pointing directly beneath it, and that is to the west. Okay? So that's where our compass is gonna point if I put it below current carrying wire with conventional flowing into the page. Let's do another example. So now I have a compass placed to the right of current carrying conductor. We wanna know which way will the needle point if electron flow, electron flow, what does that mean? It means use your left hand, okay? is flowing out of the page. So remember I draw a dot for flowing out of the page. It's that arrowhead coming right at you. Okay, and I'm gonna use my left hand now to figure this out. So out of the page, I use thumb, my thumb for which way the current is going. It's going out of the page, so it's coming right at you right now, okay? And then my fingers are naturally just pointing in the way that the magnetic field is going. So here, my fingers are going clockwise again okay so there we go so if i place a oh first let's draw that so there we go we go in clockwise still so if i place a compass over here where's my compass which way is it going to be pointing right there well again we're just looking at the field lines that directly to the right of the current carrying conductor and they are going down we see that right here right so that compass is going to be pointing south okay so that's how we figure that out. So again, just be really careful of whether you're using your right hand or your left hand. If it just says current, you're using your right hand. If it says electron flow, okay, then you're using your left hand. So there is a way to calculate force and, uh, not force, sorry, magnetic field. And I don't really understand why we don't uh, do this at the high school level. So you do not actually have to know this equation, but it is just nice to know, especially if you're gonna go on with physics. Uh, so how we calculate the magnetic field, that's what B is, by the way. 
I don't know why, it just is because all the M's were taken. So we measure those in Teslas because Tesla was really, really awesome dude. And uh, that's going to be calculated by using mu naught, which is the permeability of free space. So the extent that the field can extend into a vacuum. And that's a, just a constant number times the current going through the conductor divided by 2 times pi times r, the distance to the conductor that the magnet is or that the compass is. Okay, so that's how we calculate the magnetic field, but um, you don't have to, but still, it's cool. So we can actually have force between these conductors. Okay, if I want to look at two current carrying wires, if you have two current carrying wires, uh, close to one another, they will actually either come together or they will repel, okay? And that's really just depending on which way their current is going. Uh, so we're going to look at that and w in which kind of situation would two current carrying wires be forced together and which when would two current carrying wires be um, forced apart, okay? So let's the first one that we're going to go over is say we have current in opposite directions through conductors, okay? So remember current there means that we're gonna be using our right hand, okay? So which way are the two wires gonna go if they are going, uh, or if they're carrying current in opposite directions? So say we have one carrying current into the page and we have one carrying current out of the page. So again, I need to know what is happening with these magnetic fields, but in this case, I only care about really the magnetic fields in between them, okay? So current out of the page, no, never mind, that's into the page, current into the page here is going clockwise, okay? So at this point, it's just going like that. Sure, it's still going around like this, but I just don't care about it over there. I only care about it right here, okay? So what's happening there is we know that field lines always point from a north pole to a south pole. So what's happening is this is creating just this little temporary north pole here and a little temporary south pole here, okay? Because it's going that way and always goes towards the south pole. Now, let's figure out what's happening here. So this is coming out of the page and I have my field going in this direction. So here it's going counterclockwise. So closest to this other one is actually also going downwards, okay? So my field lines look like that. Again, they always point from north to south. So what's happening here is I have a temporary little north pole there and a temporary south pole here. So look at what's happening. We have north poles together. We have south poles together. Do no north poles like each other? No, they don't. They're too alike. They don't like each other. Do south poles like each other? No, they absolutely do not. So these two are going to repel each other. Okay, because we have a north pole by a north pole, a south pole by a south pole, they don't like that. They are going to force each other apart. Okay, so let's look if we have current going in the same direction. Okay, so before we have the opposite direction, same direction, what's going to happen with these two wires? So again, uh, doesn't matter if we choose into the page or out of the page. Let's just do into the page for fun. So I have two current carrying wires side by side, right? One of them uh, has current going into the page or the other one has current going into the page. So we're gonna figure that out. I just did something bad there. I used my left and right hand. Obviously we're not gonna do that, okay? Cause we're just looking at current. So we're looking at the right hand still. So again, here looking for which way the magnetic field is going around this current carrying wire. It's going into the page. My fingers are wrapping clockwise around. So they're going this way. Okay. It's going around and around, but again, I only care about what's going on in between these two. And so here, if we do that, it's going into the page, it's going to be wrapping around. This is the most awkward part of the hand rules is that you have to like spin your hands in weird directions, but it's going, look at that up. It's going, uh, uh, clockwise still, but that means from here, it's going from here to here like that. So there we go. There is what's happening in between these two wires with these magnetic field lines. So what's happening? Magnetic field lines always point from north to south. Therefore, this is going to be a nice little temporary north pole. This is going to be a temporary south pole. What's happening here? This is going to be a nice temporary south pole because there's a field line 
pointing towards it, that's going to be a temporary north pole, field line pointing away from it. What's happening? Ooh, north and south, south and north, they like each other, right? Opposites attract. So therefore, these are going to attract. So if we have these two current carrying wires, they're going to just go right together. Okay, so there you go. That's what's happening with those guys. Again, I can also figure out uh, what's going on with that mathematically, but still don't have to do any of that in our current curriculum. I just love math so much, so I want to show you how you can mathematically do this. But uh, just keep in mind, the beginning of magnetism here for us is a lot of theory and very little math, and that's what a lot of people just have a hard time um, kind of getting into because so far we've just done so much math when it's come to physics. So you can do math here, but we're just not doing it. Okay. But if we, I want to know how much force per unit length of wire I had that those two would exert on each other, either attractive or repulsive, I have my equation here. So we still need that permeabil permeability of free space. And then we need to multiply that by the current in the two conductors and then divide it by two times pi times r, the distance between the two conductors. And then that would be how much force per unit length they'd be exerting on each other. Okay. But of course you don't actually need to use that at all, but there is math for it because there has to be math for everything and why you don't have to do that math. I don't know. Alberta education, put this in the curriculum. It's an easy, easy equation to deal with. Okay. Um, so that is the first hand rule and how you're going to use it. So I'm going to do a whole new other video for the second hand rule. Um, technically they're supposed to be in the same lesson, but let's just separate those videos. Okay. Okay. So if you want to do some work on the first hand rule and figure out how it works, um, and let me warn you, this is the type of thing where a lot of people are like, whatever, I got it. And then as soon as they have to use it, you just like completely lose your mind. So please, please, please do these uh, questions. So just for the first hand rule, these are obviously the pages for both, but uh, page 139 here, these first two problems, uh, 140 we have these guys and 150 we have number six here. So that's all the first hand rule, okay? Uh, so you can work on those and then immediately go on to the second hand rule and that's to do with the solenoids and uh, we're gonna do that next, okay? But a lot of these ones you're just looking at a situation saying either which way is the magnetic field going or which way is the current going. So I'm just gonna go over this one because again, this is uh, one that a lot of people have a hard time with. I brought a pencil over here, but now I can't find it. Seriously, online teaching is tough. I got it, you guys. Okay, so for example, 4A, let's just do that one. That's all I'm gonna do for you. So we have this magnetic field. Um, it's drawn with these X's and these dots, right? So we know what that means. That means out of the page, that means into the page, right? Arrowhead coming right at you. Arrow feathers going into the page, okay? So out of the page, into the page. Uh, so we want to determine the direction of the electron flow. So that means that we're going to be using our left hand. Right? So here's the left hand. We want to determine direct or our electron flow. Okay. For the indicated magnetic field. So here it's indicating that the magnetic field is going into the page here and then coming out of the page there. So if you can kind of look at this and um, imagine your hand going there, going behind the wire and going up like that. That's what's happening. So if we actually want to bring that into a three-dimensional situation, there's my wire. Okay, so I know it's going into the page here. Then it's got to go behind and then it's coming out of the page there. Okay, so that's what's happening. So which way is your thumb pointing when you do that with your left hand? It's pointing up, pointing to the top of the page. Okay, so that's what the way that your electron flowing is going towards the top of the page or north. Okay, it's really important that now we use our north, south, east, west on the plane of the page and not up and down because now up is going to be out of the page and down will be into the page. Okay, so this is your north, south, east, west. So please, please, please use this navigational system for the plane of your paper. Up is going to be out of the page, down is going to be into the page. Okay, uh, so that's how we're going to use that. So again, here it's going into the page, behind, out of the page. Your thumb is pointing upwards. Uh, oh, I did it again. Your thumb is pointing to the north. 
Okay, so my electrons are flowing to the north. Okay, so electrons are flowing north. So please uh, do your best at the rest of these uh, examples and see what you can do there. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope you guys uh, get that. Now go look at the second hand rule.